Share with him eternal glory. It's a Benedictine medal on the rosary. It's beautiful. Let us pray. God of loving kindness, listen favorably to our prayers. Strengthen our belief that your son has risen from the dead, and our hope that your servant Margaret will also rise again. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your son who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. First reading. Reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all fall asleep, but we shall all be changed in an instant, in the blink of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For that which is corruptible we must put on incorruption, and that which is mortal must put on immortality. And when this, which is corruptible, shall have put on incorruption, and that which is mortal shall have put on immortality, and the word that is written shall come about. Death is swallowed up in victory. Where, O death, is your victory? Where, O death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thank you to God who gives us the victory 
through our Lord Jesus Christ, the Word of the Lord. I raise my eyes to the mountains, where shall my help come? I raise my eyes to the mountains, from where shall my help come? I raise my eyes toward the mountains, from whence shall come my help? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. I raise my eyes to the mountains, from where shall my help come? He will not allow your foot to slip, are your guardians asleep? Behold, the guardian of Israel never slumbers nor sleeps. I raise my eyes to the mountains, from where I shall my help come. The Lord is your guardian, the Lord is your shade at your right hand. I raise my eyes to the mountains, from where I shall my help come. By day the sun will not strike you, nor the moon by night. The Lord will guard you from all evil. He will guard your soul. The Lord will guard your coming and going both now and forever. I raise my eyes towards the mountains and where I my The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. When Mary came to where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who had come with her weeping, he became perturbed and deeply troubled and said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Sir, come and see. And Jesus wept. So the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, Could not the one who opened the eyes of the blind man have done something so that this man would not have died. So Jesus, perturbed again, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone lay across it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the dead man's sister, said to him, Lord, by now there will be a stench. He has been dead for four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? So they took away the stone, and Jesus raised his eyes and said, Father, I thank you for hearing me. I know that you always hear me. But because of the crowd, here I have said this, that they, have, they may believe that you sent me. And when he had said this, he cried out in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, tied hand and foot with burial cloths, and his face was wrapped in a cloth. So Jesus said to the crowd, Untie him and let him go. Now many of the Jews who had come to, to Mary and seen what he had done, 
began to believe in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to the Lord Jesus Christ. We shall not all fall asleep, but we will all be changed in an instant in the blink of an eye at the last trumpet. On behalf of myself and all of us here at St. Anne's Songs, we offer our prayers for all of you and for Mrs. Goldcamp. Um, I remember, I think he's probably one of the first people that I remember seeing and meeting um, about 20 years ago when I came to the monastery. Um, I didn't know her extremely well, but when I became pastor, and uh, when was that? A year and a half ago, um, I, I actually invited her in January at her home because I thought she was going to, the Lord was going to take her to himself then, but she went on for another year and a half. So it was beautiful. And I but see her down at the, um, she did come to some of the guild events this year, even though Jack doesn't believe me. I did see her um, And um, so we prayed for her, and um, we, I'm sorry that not everyone can be here. I had a, um, we had another funeral on Tuesday, and I named all of the grandchildren and great grandchildren. But I don't think I can do that for this funeral. But there are 21 grandchildren and 29 great grandchildren, and um, of course, her wonderful sons. And just all that life in itself is such a beautiful thing in itself. And then all of our dear friends and parishioners who are watching, who enjoyed, um, I have to call them as gold camp, I just have to do that. Marge's friendship um, for so many years. Um, in her 97 years, 60 of those years were devoted to her dear friend and husband, Bob. Mary grew up in North St. Louis County in Presentation Parish where she um, met the future love of her life at um, a play that was being put on at the parish, right? And the, parish, the play was not very fruitful, but as the Lord does, um, something fruitful came from that play where Marge and Bud met each other um, and fell in love. As we know, um, Marge was a very active and devoted, faith-filled woman involved in various activities here at St. Anselm, and one of them being St. Vincent de Paul Society, her and Bud, and where they were the hands and the feet of Christ to our neighbors in need, both with their Generosity, the normal generosity, and then their just hard work and active involvement in that, in serving our neighbors in need, and doing that with great devotion. And also um, with the Guild Group as well, another wonderful ministry here at St. Anselm's. But more so, her love and prayer and her great devotion to the Holy Spirit. And the, um, that's where she met um, beloved David Luke, a happy memory, and um, Father Rafe. Father Rafe, um, I wonder if you wanted to say this, but probably you mad at me, but Father Rafe and Father Benedict um, send their greetings and their love and prayers on a special way to everyone. Um, dear friends of Marge. St. Paul tells us that the Spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs of Christ, 
if only we all suffer with him, so that we may also be glorified with him. In her baptism, Marge was filled with that gift of the Holy Spirit, and throughout her life, her faith and devotion to her family and to the church, by the power of that same Spirit, and her devotion to the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And she showed that just in her presence, and I was touched by in the obituary, um, that she was, and still is, a tiny little source of love and strength to her family and friends. In the psalm that was specially chosen for this Mass, um, in her life of faith, she kept her eyes raised to the Lord, as the psalm says, I raise my eyes toward the mountains, from whence shall come my help. The Lord is your guardian, the Lord is your shade at your right hand. As we all do, when Marge had her shares of ups and downs in this life, but with the Lord steadily at her right hand as her guardian, and she does all with a smile. We have hope that she lives with him through the life and grace of the Holy Spirit. We know that she lived united with the Lord in this life, being faithful and devoted to her Catholic faith, and in particular, again, in that um, participation in the life of the Spirit. And I believe in the charismatic movement, one of the first members of that here um, in the early days. And again, a deep, transforming devotion to the power of the Holy Spirit. We believe that Marge lived in this Christian hope, and that she'll be raised with her Lord and give a new life with him in heaven. We know that her belief in the Lord Jesus, that she we have seen in her life of faith and in her love of him and neighbor throughout her generous, through her generous heart and life on earth. The Lord tells us, the scriptures tell us that we come here as people of faith in the reality that neither death, nor life, nor present things can separate us from the love of God. The love that God has for us and for Marge. Christ came into the world out of love to see, set us free, as he did his friend Lazarus. He has unbound us by his suffering, death, and resurrection. And we come here to remember the gift of life of Marge, our friend, but to also offer our prayers for her in this Mass. And in the coming days, we continue to pray for her and for one another, that we will support each other in our prayers and to be witnesses to our Lord's love and and power and goodness that we know that Marge so witnessed to in her life in this world. Now let's offer our prayers to our Heavenly Father. For Margaret, who in baptism was given the pledge of eternal life, that she may now be admitted to the company of the saints, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
When Margaret created the body of Christ, the bread of life, that she may be raised up on the last day, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. prayer. For our deceased relatives and friends, especially, and for all who need have helped us, that they may get the reward of their goodness, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have fallen asleep in the hope of rising again, that they may see the face of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the family and friends of Margaret, that they may be consoled in their grief by the Lord who wept at the death of his friend Lazarus. May we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us assembled here to worship in faith, that we may be gathered again in God's kingdom. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord God, giver of peace and healer of souls, hear the prayers of the Redeemer, Jesus Christ, and the voices of your people, whose lives were purchased by the blood of the Lamb. Forgive the sins of all who sleep in Christ, and grant them a place in the kingdom. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Oh, 
Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of a new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. giving thanks to your help us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Robert our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember your servant Margaret, whom you have called from this world to yourself, Grant that she who was united with her son in a death like hers, his, may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O oh God, Almighty Father. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. 
thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, to graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory and the worship, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's offer each other the sign of peace.
Mom was mom, not mother. She wasn't afraid to get her hands dirty. She raised six boys during the 50s, 60s, and 70s. 
and we put her through the ringer, boy. Not one of us is innocent of that. She won every battle, though. Mom was always there for you. She always had your back, and if you screwed up, she had your backs out. She never gave up on you, and her selflessness was unparalleled. She won your undying love and devotion by her example. Mom was an original fitness nut. Jack and Mark remember her exercising the Doc Everhart on the radio when they were cots, and I remember her exercising the Jack Lane on TV. She continued the fitness regimen into her 90s and was on her treadmill just last summer. She was fun. She liked to play games, especially Scrabble, which she continued to play with Paul after Dad's passing. She loved golf. Bob reminded us of the way that she used her body to try and guide her butts into the hole. I think Dave inherited that too. Bob also said he's going to miss hearing her say his name. Think about that for a second and you'll know exactly what he means. She was smart as a whip and she never stopped educating herself. She first got on a computer when she was 80. She FaceTimed to meet her newest great granddaughter, Maggie, just two weeks ago. She always carried herself with grace and dignity. She was not flashy. She never wanted a fancy car or a big house. She appreciated the simple pleasures, birds in the trees, flowers in bloom. She was a happy person with a big, beautiful smile. She was the embodiment of the best qualities in a human being. Honest, patient, wholesome, loving, generous, tasteful, but most of all, she was inspiration. Mark said, every time I left the presence, I always felt better than when I arrived. That's so true. Through all of life's ups and downs, she never complained. She took it all in stride and almost never let it get her down. She was really pretty quiet, but she would speak her piece, and she was a great conversationalist. Most of all, she was the best listener. She really heard you, and she was like that with everyone. She took her position as the sole survivor of her extended family's generation seriously and represented them with honor. She kept in contact with her nieces and nephews and was genuinely interested in their well-being. The friends she made were too numerous to count. She continued to make friends and touch people even in her last days. Nikki, Carmen, Renee, and all the other great caregivers can attest to that. If you knew her, you couldn't help but love her. Think of all that love. The kids, the grandkids, great grandchildren, a heart overflowing with love. It's easy to see why Dad loved her so much. The love that Mom and Dad have for each other is epic. After a long life of raising their family, I'm sure there was no happier time for her than when it was just the two of them in Santa Bell and on their other travels. You can't help but have imagined what their reunion might have been like. Any reflection on Mom's life would be greatly lacking if it didn't highlight her faith, which was the cornerstone of her entire life. She lived the tenets of her faith. Her life was a testimony to the existence of God, and not just the existence of God, but God's love. She didn't just talk the talk, she walked the walk. When I was a kid, I'd get embarrassed by how loudly she sang in church. I thought, the voice isn't that good for you to be singing that loud. But I didn't understand at the time. She was singing for one reason, to glorify God. She did that so well in so many ways. She welcomed into her home a variety of families, political refugees, families seeking treatment at local hospitals. 
It may have been Dad's idea, but she was with him 100%. She gave generously the time and treasure. Along with Dad, she was deeply involved in the parish community at St. Anselm, as well as St. Vincent Paul, Larry Rice's ministries, and countless others. The way she treated people made her Christianity obvious. She had such a fully developed relationship with Jesus that you could feel his presence when you were with her. This is a passage that was highlighted from the well-worn copy of a daily devotional mom and dad both love called Streams in the Desert. Meet him alone. Meet him regularly. Meet him with his open book of counsel before you. And face the regular and irregular duties of each day with the influence of his personality definitely controlling your every act. Thank you, Mom. We love you too. Paul writes in 2 Timothy, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Standing upon the seashore, a ship at my side spreads her white sails to the morning breeze and starts for the blue ocean. She is an object of beauty and strength, and I stand and watch her until she hangs like a speck of white cloud, just where the sea and sky come down and mingle with each other. Then someone at my side says, there, she's gone. Gone where? Gone from my sight, that's all. She is just as large and massed and hull and spar as she was when she left my side, and just as able to bear her load of living freight to the place of her destination. Her diminished size is in me, not in her. And just at that moment, when someone at my side says, there she's gone, there are other eyes that are watching, and other voices ready to take up the glad shout. Here she comes. Before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our sister. May our farewell express our affection for her. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully greet her again when the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself. Thank you. 
Thank you. 